It's time to talk sports. It's time for the show. When you hear this song on the radio, it's time to tune in. Better act fast. Let me get that part of Potograph Sports Talk Radio. Starting now. Let's go. What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 179 of Let Me Get That Potograph, and a special one indeed. My name, of course, is Drew, or the DH, and joining me, my co-host, Mr. Scott Rappaport. What up, dude? Well, you know, I feel like we opened every episode with it's a special one, but this week, this week it's is special. Different. This week is special, and it is so special. We are going to change up the order a little bit and how we're doing things this week normally. So last week, put off doing the release calendar because we had a bunch of other stuff that we had to talk about. Normally, we would come back after the break or do it at the end of the show. This week, though, we're going to do it at the beginning. Yep. Because we have a really awesome exclusive interview coming up yeah. we got john from denver card shows who's gonna be joining us a little bit later in the show and we will tell you why in a little bit this is an exclusive you're not gonna hear it anywhere else you'll hear what it's about everywhere else yes but you will not hear john's take on it anywhere yeah else you will not get here. more you'll definitely not get any more detailed information and stuff like that than you will from uh from the show today I, i'm really looking forward to this one man this was a, a last minute little text grab but um it pays to have friends in high places sometimes. Exactly. Or if you're Garth Brooks, friends in low places. There you go. Yeah. So let's just dive into it. Let's do it, man. So we got the release calendar. Yes. And I'm kind of mad we didn't have time to fit this in last week because we have some really cool stuff coming up. The big one, there's actually two really big ones that everybody yeah. is just going to be excited about. And that's next week on the 15th, Prism Football is coming out. And, you know, I, I we've already heard your thoughts a little bit about it earlier in a previous episode. What, the, the um, design is fucking terrible? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, and I'm going to go out of order here. And there's a reason that I want to go out of order. We also have flawless basketball coming out on the 31st. Mm -hmm. That is obviously flawless basketball is going to be a huge one. That's oh, yeah. know, kind of a given. We've got Upper Deck Series 2 hockey coming Woo! out on the 29th. That is uh, obviously the next round of 49 young guns mm -hmm. that are going to be popping in there. I have not even looked at the checklist to see who is going to have uh, their young gun in there. So I'm, I'm hoping for something big. We'll check that out later. Now, before that, on the 24th, we've got... Prism Premier League Soccer. That's and a biggie. That is a biggie. That is going to be Erling Holland's first club yep. Prism card. And we mentioned this about a couple months ago. Uh, I don't want to get too off topic, but it is going to be interesting. Does Panini slap that rookie logo on? I have seen a, a couple of things with it, and... There it is. Actually, it's on the sell sheet. They actually, the black, you know, the one of one that they showcase on there sure. is Erling Holland. And it does not have a rookie. All right. So, on so they, it. Went, they went the smart route with it, at least. Well, hold on. That doesn't mean that that is going to be the final. They may have just thrown, you know, they may have just thrown That's out there. True. They may have decided to add it after the fact. I would, you know, I, I, I lean towards this being the actual card. Where yeah. It's not, you know. There's not the logo on it, but the mock-up that I saw of it uh, from the sell sheet does not have the rookie logo on it. Which regardless, I mean, irregardless of that, uh, that this is going to be a massive card. His first club kit in the Premier League, his first prism card like that. Yes. This is going to be a massive, massive card. And we've got a good rookie class as well. A lot of players that did change teams last year. A lot of big names mm -hmm. that are going to get their first Premier League card. A lot of guys that were in Bundesliga, La Liga, and stuff like that that came over that are going to have their first club cards. There was so much movement. Uh, that's a pretty big release. Yeah. And now, when we, now we should say their first club prism cards. Yes, club guys prism. that moved over. Yeah. And it's really guys that moved over from Bundesliga. Yeah. Because... You have, uh, you know, the guys that were in actually and, and some guys that moved over from League One uh, in France as well, because 
there already is Prism, uh, or I'm sorry, there's no, it's Mosaic that they have yeah, for Mosaic. Liga. And Mosaic for, there's one of the ones, Series A. Uh, in Italy, yeah. they do some of that as part of Chronicles. So there is some Prism, um, you know, overlay in there. But this one is going to be good because obviously Man City has a massive fan base. So they're, oh, yeah. you know, the Man City people are going to be chasing Holland cards now, in addition to the Holland people. Yeah. who obviously are, are there and I'm I'm most excited about seeing Sven Botman you know yeah. with Newcastle in a card because he did have rookies last year he was in uh Stadium Club and Chrome, and I'm trying to think what else he was in. Finest right. uh, is what he was in, but he was with Lily. Exactly. So you know they were all cha- it was all Champions League products. So I'm excited to have uh, a, you know a true Premier League product with him with him in there. So that being said, moving on, and, and again we're going out of order. So we are going back to the 22nd of March, and this was one that was kind of a surprise. And I know <laughs> when I brought this up to you earlier, you were super excited about hearing. This I one. was. Tops is getting, well, not getting back into because they've done it a couple times, but they are releasing another basketball product, and this one should be a fun one. 2022 Tops Chrome McDonald's All-American Basketball. Boom, baby. This one is going to be fun. Um, They took the 2022 Tops baseball design. Brilliant idea. Which I loved. I love that. I love that design. I think it was a great decision to do that. And they did a 100-card base set with the top stars from the men's and women's McDonald's All-American games. It's both, obviously, the East and West rosters, and it's a 100-card base set. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out, because I don't think there were 25 players on each roster for yeah, each now, of those teams. I don't think there was either. I think they, I mean, normally you're kept to about 11 and 12-man teams unless they're doing... Uh, I don't know how big the McDonald's All Americans. They they might have expanded rosters for that just to include more people. I'm not sure. Or um, is it? Or is it one per? Because I vaguely remember something about their like one per state or it, something. It, that could easily be it. And yeah. if they could also do something along the lines of. Uh, how they did with um, Bowman U. There's a hundred card checklist, but a lot of players have two cards. There's right. a lot of stuff they could do, even though it's not under the Bowman name. So you won't see like a first Bowman. There's a lot of stuff they could do to overlap the players twice. Yeah. Or um, like with with Topps Chrome OTE that they did right. last year. Some some guys had three cards. Exactly. So I I don't think I do think you're going to see some overlay. Some players probably have two cards. Probably a. Uh, portrait version and then an in-game shot action or something along those lines which is what ote did a lot of but i'm a huge fan of this dude and i know and everyone that listens knows that i love the the burgeoning nil prospecting market and this is dropping down into high school now (laughs) yep i mean you're you're getting high school guys here and girls that are going to be in this set but the big thing about this i didn't see him on the sell sheet I don't expect him to be in this product, but it's paving the way and it's getting collectors minds and getting people used to buying and looking at the McDonald's all American sets for when what they announced at the conference a couple of weeks ago, when Bronny James autos come into play. So there's as much info that you can get people and get people's mind on mcdonald's all american and have it as a brand instead of just throwing it out there and having brawny in your first set like headlining the whole thing i think that's a mistake because people say oh it's a money grab blah 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 this is kind of their them inching their way into that i think and yeah i I, I don't know i don't even know if brawny was a mcdonald's all american he is a uh, McDonald's All-American because that's what they said at the conference was he you will be getting brawny mcdonald's all-american autos Oh, well, if that's the case, he might actually be in there. This is the 22 release, and he is a 2023 McDonald's. Oh. So that's why I do think this is a precursor to get people used to this product for when he comes in. Because just like they did with Bowman U, they threw something out last year that, you know, no logos, a uh, yeah. couple things like that. And then you have this year. Look what's happening this year with Bowman U. Boxes are rising. Player singles are rising. And now you've got McDonald's All-American. I think this is going to be kind of like their first OTE, their test and their, their little stepping their foot in the water a little bit for when they're able to have Bronny live in these upcoming releases that we are going to have probably sometime this year. I wouldn't be surprised if they pull kind of like a uh, 
Tops did with F1 and have two, like when Dynasty had two uh, year releases in the same yeah. year. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see more McDonald's All American stuff, maybe not under the Chrome name, but stuff released this year. But I do think this is 100% a way to inch McDonald's All American into their product line for ultimately when the Bronny James stuff is included in it. Because let's yeah. be honest, no matter what, those are going to go nuts. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. Those are going to be completely and utterly insane. Um, but I mean, you do have you do have a good checklist on that as well. I mean, and by, uh, by the way, when I mean, when I say insane, I do mean absolutely insane because people are going to be paying a ridiculous amount of money for the autograph of Bronny James. And I say the same thing about these, you know, like baseball prospects and stuff like that too. Guys are spending ridiculous amounts of money on players that have not proven themselves. Yeah. And I don't think Bronny is going to be anywhere near the player that his father is. Oh God, no, no. And he just completely choked by the way, in his last, uh, his last big game, he completely choked and was rated by most, uh, <laughs> by most um, scouts as the fifth or sixth blood best player on the court in that game so uh definitely struggled in his uh championship game did they win no okay that just like his father yeah <laughs> he's keeping keeping the family tradition alive there you go can you can you tell i love lebron i do i can't i can't yeah. oh man so yeah that would i mean that that's pretty much that's pretty much it that's notable that is on there Oh wait, no contenders, contenders football. That hey, that's a great one. I miss um, that. That one's always a that one's always a good. And one. we did have immaculate that just dropped. Um, it did just drop, so it's already out. But it did just release here at the beginning of March. So you've got immaculate football as well that's out now. So pretty pretty big month for releases. It's so weird having prism football contenders football releasing when we're talking about the upcoming draft class and we've already got franchise tags being placed on people and yet we haven't got our prism and our contenders and obviously contenders optic way down the line and all that type of stuff but it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be interesting yeah. there there i do like seeing stuff like uh Prism Premier League and uh, Chrome McDonald's All American, these different products starting to pop up as opposed to maybe churning out a 55th NBA product. <laughs> yeah. And I'm pretty sure that uh, we also have uh, Tops Gold Label Baseball coming out on the 22nd. And I'm pretty sure that is going to be the final release of Gold Label Baseball. It sh as, um, according yeah. to Tops, it should be. So at least for yeah. a while. Unless, you know, they need, what they need to do is they need to take all the brands that they're discontinuing and do like a Chronicles type product. Well, I mentioned you know, they, do it with, they do it with archives where they take three past years and, you know, use those designs. But they need to do a. Uh, yeah, that's a know. half ass version. I'm, I mean, I mentioned it on my socials the other day. They need to do it with the Topps Chrome stuff that they do, too. Let's get rid of uh, Topps Chrome Sonic. Let's get rid of the. I mean, you can keep your sapphires, but make the Ben Ballers and stuff. Uh, put all that stuff in a in a Chronicles type of set, so they can keep that intellectual property and not lose gold label and, and all that type of yeah. stuff. But there's no way you couldn't take the products that they are shelving, along with some of the absurd stuff that they're putting out right now, condense it down into a Chronicles type product, and you'd have something amazing because there's some great stuff in gold label, but it just doesn't have the, you know, it doesn't deserve an entire run. No, absolutely. Opinion. No, absolutely not. I mean, and you can do a, you can do a product where, cause like, I, I think Gypsy Queen is going away too. Yeah. You can do an all Chrome Chronicles type product and have a Chrome Gypsy Queen so that is the release calendar, uh, or at least what is notable and important or what we think is notable or important. And we don't really care about what anybody else thinks about any of the rest of it. So <laughs> we are going to no, I'm totally kidding about that. Look, everybody collects what they want. Everybody's excited about the different things that they want. Yeah. And somebody's going to cut out that sound bite and make me look really bad uh, coming <laughs> up here. But that's the dangers of, you know, doing this, doing this. Sure. So that is, yeah, that is it for release calendar for this month. We'll bring that back at the beginning of April and talk about what we got coming out that month. Absolutely. But now. Yes. Now we got the fun stuff. Oh, yeah. And we're going to tease you a little bit, too. So we all know about scams and fakes and uh, all sorts of stuff that's been going around, you know, over the years, whether it's counterfeit cards, counterfeit slabs, trimming, trimming. pressing, you know, you name it, you can think about it. We well, talked about it all. <laughs> exactly. So on the 8th, Sports Collectors Daily dropped an article about an 82-year-old Colorado man who was charged in an 
$800,000 sports card fraud scheme. And I'm going to summarize it briefly. The article is basically about this guy named Mil Mayo Gilbert McNeil knowingly selling fake high grade cards in a scheme that netted him $800,000 in cash and oh, other cards in a scheme that went on for over four years. And obviously we know it's over four years and we'll get into that with our guest coming up here soon. I think it's higher than 800, but again, another topic. Yeah. He was arrested Wednesday morning in Denver and I'm reading this directly from the sports collectors daily article, just to make sure I quote them properly or attribute this to them properly. Uh, McNeil was arrested Wednesday morning in Denver and made his initial appearance in district court. There's released on $50,000 bond and will be arraigned in the Eastern district of New York in Brooklyn on March 16th. And he was assigned a public defender. Now we're going to talk about a little bit about this, but this goes back to at least 2015. And he's talking about, I mean, th this involves fake PSA slabs mm -hmm. in addition to fake cards and trimmed cards. And this is, Absolutely. No, this kind of runs the gamut of everything. Yeah. This this is uh, a major step forward. And shout out to Rich Mueller, uh, one uh, one of the best hobby writers in the in the business. Probably uh, written more words than most people outside of one person, Rich Klein. <laughs> um, Rich Mueller had a great article on there, so definitely check it out on Sports Collectors Daily. But yeah, this is a massive, massive big charge and something that obviously everyone knew was going on for a while. Like I said, this stuff dates back a lot more than the four years that yes. the FBI and everything is, ta is talking about. But th this is a major step toward in a major haul this is not some small guy in this thing this is this is a big name and yeah. this is a big grab so very very interesting but um it also coincides with our guest today well that's the reason why that's the reason why we have our guest today yes he is the first known we call him the victim. Yeah. And well, I mean, that's what he was. Yeah. He was the first known victim and he's open about it. And he actually turned it will. And later in the interview, we'll actually hear about how he turned his getting screwed over by this guy. Yeah. And being treated like crap by certain people from within the industry into something absolutely amazing. So there is a good, there's a good thing. Exactly. that actually came. Like, I hate to see people get, get scammed and get screwed over like this and, and they leave taken for money. But, he didn't just say, all right, screw it. I'm done. Right. He said, all right, screw it. I I'm going to do everything I can to make sure it doesn't happen to people again. Yeah. And I'm going to create something amazing. That's why, yes. yeah, guys, when we said this episode was special, yes, the first known victim and it is an incredible story. And uh, he, he's going to go into some details and some things that you will not hear anywhere else. And like Scott said, it's absolutely uh, amazing that, something so rough and something like really bad that happened to him at the beginning fostered something so beautiful. So, but speaking of scams, yeah, I cannot believe that you guys all listen to us talk every week. So go listen to this ad <laughs> so we can pocket some cash <laughs> and we'll be right back with John. And welcome back, everybody, to episode 179 of Let Me Get That Potograph. And as promised, now we have uh, as the story we we're talking about just before the break, the massive $800,000 plus sports card fraud scheme that was brought to light by Sports Collectors Daily. We now have with us one of the actual victims in this whole cons in this whole scheme and he is also the owner of denver card shows one of our awesome sponsors mr john scanlon thanks for joining us bro uh, of course thanks for having me fellas appreciate it absolutely major major short notice so greatly appreciated uh you you taking the time to uh talk about this is this something pretty big going on right now oh yeah and i mean my finger's been in the in the dip of this mix for a while um you know I, I was one of the first victims, I think, that's on record uh, with my experience happening in 2015. So, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, yeah, that is a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, what, you know, what exactly happened in your, ex you know, in your experience when, uh, when this all went down, started, you know, start at the beginning, you know, how, how sure. you were presented with the offer and the, you know, the, the transaction, how did it happen? Where did it happen? Yeah. Um, all right. So starting at the tippy top, um, in 2015, my son was, I found out my wife was pregnant and was, I was having my son and I had been 
dipping my toes back into cards at that point in time. You know, I was flipping a few things here and there and, you know, I wasn't really serious, serious about it at that point yet, but, um, but my son was going to be born in a few months and I went out searching for an heirloom card for him. Right. Totally. And, under, totally yeah. understandable. I did the yep. same. Yeah. So I, what I ended up trying to settle on was a Jordan rookie. And right. after looking around um, at that point in time, I was comfortable buying a PSA nine and they were selling for about $2,200 at that point. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. What we refer to as the good old days. Yeah, yeah the, the exactly. Good old days. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a few references to prices in the good old days here. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so the Jordans were going for about twenty two hundred um, and I found one on Craigslist and ended up working a deal with the guy where I was going to get it for eighteen hundred cash. OK, so um, I, I thought that was reasonable. I didn't feel like he was trying to give it away. And, you know, I was actually semi-informed about fake PSA slabs at that point. Um, so I I wanted to know what to do to take care of myself. And, I, you know, obviously, you know, check the number in the registry, make sure it matches. Um, one of the things at that point, which was in its infancy, was I took a, an app that would read barcodes and I scanned the barcode on it. And the barcode zapped up with the exact same number that was on the cert. So it was just another thing that made me feel good. Um and, you know, I, at that point in time, I hadn't really been educated in by the card, not the case that it's in. Right. Yep. You know, so I, I was, I was happy with all the checks, you know, there was no, no, um, frosting around the edges, like everything checked out. So I bought the card, put it away in the safety deposit box. Didn't think about it again for a while. Right. Uh, about three months later, the guy who sold me the Jordan reached out again and was you know, asked me first was like, Hey, I just wanted to see if you were happy with the purchase. I was like, yeah, man, very happy. It's a card I wanted to put away. And, you know, so he's like, listen, I've got this, um, Reggie Jackson rookie. That's in a PSA nine. You should take a look at, you know? And at that point in time, again, there had been one sale and the sale was at $3,900. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now, now I think it's a hundred thousand dollar car yeah. of Reggie Jackson in a nine, right? So like a thirty nine hundred was a recent comp, and we ended up kind of settling or we ended up settling at three thousand dollars, I believe it was. Okay. So definitely, I mean, look, three grand reasonable on a thirty six hundred dollar ask. I yeah, don't see any issues with that. Right. So and, and at this point, this was our second transaction. I actually met him at his house, right? which I've come to learn recently probably wasn't his house. It was more of what uh, the kids call it, trap house. So um, <laughs> I, I go over to this apartment, and when I get there, he's unboxing an order from PSA. Like, on yeah. Peyton Manning rookies, like, uh, legitimate order, right? So, again, something that made me feel comfortable with the situation. We end up making the deal for the, um, for the Reggie. Right. And okay. I leave. And I decide that I'm going to try to flip that. And I decided rather than doing it myself, um, I was going to use Probstein because I noticed at that point, you know, he was getting more oh, yeah. eyeballs on his yep. auctions. He was getting more. So I figured he, I, I would gamble and hopefully make up more than I would lose in the fees and get, you know, end up with more right. by sending it to Rick. Well, yeah, back in 2015, I mean, I mean, we're talking all the way back in 2015, way before the stuff's even really brought to light at least federally, you know, back then Probstein was eBay's consigner for sports cards. There weren't, uh, there weren't DC sports and all these other yep. places, top notch and all these um, amazing places to go. If you wanted to consign and you wanted massive eyes, Probstein is where you were going to go in 2015. Well, I, I know the opinion of Rick in general, but I mean, part of this story, I've always had a little bit of respect for him. So I, I sent the card to Rick. I called him and I asked him if it was something he was interested in. He said, of course, you know, send it in. We'll see what we can do. Um, so I mailed it into him. And a few days after he had it, he called me and he was like, John, um, I want to talk to you about that Reggie. Uh, I can't sell it. Um, it didn't look quite right to me. And I took it to one of my friends at SGC because SGC, I believe, was in New Jersey at that point. Um, and they had one of their graders confirm that the Reggie Jackson that was in that case was trimmed. And, you know, I was in a little bit of disbelief. You know, I was 
half under the impression that, you know, I'd done my homework. So I was pretty sure that what I bought was legit. Um, but Rick was like, listen, dude, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sending this back to you. I just can't risk my reputation and, you know, sell that to one of my customers. Yeah. Again, and you definitely, and you definitely can't hold that against Rick for a hundred percent. So, I mean, that, that honestly tells me that Rick's got integrity, you know? So I understand a lot of the things that are said about him, but you know, I, I think that a lot of what happens may be out of his control. Maybe not. Maybe I'm being a little naive because I saw that part of him. But um, so I, I never had a problem there, but Rick sent it back to me. And But one of the things that he said was, hey, John, with these fakes, a lot of times you could take your thumbnail and get it in between the seal of the fake and, you know, run your thumbnail up it and it'll crack the case open. Now, the Reggie didn't do that. You know, we tried. Yeah. I was like, OK, cool. Well, immediately, the first thing I thought is, yeah, better better run over and check the Jordan. <laughs> So I ran over, checked the Jordan, and the first thing I put my thumbnail in, it cracked right up the side. The frosting oh. popped like it was easy to open, right? So yeah, because it wasn't it wasn't sonically sealed like right. the, uh, you know, like the the real ones are, and yep. the you know the guys that are spending money to you know purchase the slabs, they're not spending the twenty to thirty grand to purchase the machine that sonically right. seals them. Correct. So I take my thumb, crack open the Jordan, and as soon as the Jordan is in my hand, I know that it is a counterfeit card, right? Because yep. I've held 1986 Fleer cards before, and this wasn't the same consistency. It wasn't the same thickness. It wasn't. It just was not a Fleer card that was authentic. So right. um, I knew at that point that, yeah, what Rick was sending back to me obviously was probably fraudulent as well. Um, so at that point I went to PSA, I called them and I was like, Hey, I just had a major, um, a major consignment guy that would not take this PSA card. What do I do? She asked me for the serial number and she said, there's nothing wrong with that card. It's a good card. Maybe the guy didn't want to sell it. And I, I was like, that's kind of weird that someone who consigns cards wouldn't just want to make yeah. an easy $500 <laughs> on a yeah. transaction like yep. that. So, you know, that didn't really add up to me. Um, and I didn't really get anywhere with the ground level customer service. So my next step, you know, was trying to be a futuristic man of the times. And um, I went on Twitter to Joe Orlando and I was like, Joe, I got ripped off by this guy Mayo you know, what can I do to help this not happen to anybody else? You know, this guy is op operating in my backyard. Um, the, the people in my community are going to be affected. How can I help? You've been in this? his house. Like, you, I mean, yep. you're the perfect person to talk to. Right. Um, I checked Twitter 45 minutes later to see if there was anything going on. And Joe Orlando blocked me. Ooh. Oof. Yeah. That, just, I am. That's I did not because, like that, man. That no. that soured me on PSA yeah. for a long time. No, one. So, well, I mean, I I get that one hundred percent. Now, I mean, keep in mind, everyone, we're talking way back in twenty fifteen uh, for new ownerships taking over and all of that. But to to speak to Joe Joe Orlando to talk to him, who is someone who. I've spoken to countless times on Twitter before we knew each other. Um, and yeah. a lot of other people have for him to dismiss that is kind of, it, it's kind of worrisome considering at the same time, they were doing a lot of alterations to their flips. They were changing mm -hmm. things constantly. So yep. to not even discuss that, to not even want to say, Hey, is this real? Hey, maybe this guy has some flips we haven't seen it, and, all types of stuff to combat forgery yep. and just go straight or, to block. That's a, that's a little D odd. How about DM me and be like, look, I really don't want this public, but let's right. talk, you know, privately about what it is. Cause I did just straight tweet it. You know, I didn't, sure. I didn't DM yeah. him. I, I just put it out there, but then well, he like, may not have seen, he may not have block. seen the DM because if, you know, if he's not following you, you're not following him. Right. It's not going to go right to him. It's going to go right. into the, you know, generic folder. And, you know, I never, I never see any of those. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, it's understandable that, you know, you would approach it the way you approached it. Mm -hmm. um, I, 
So, so a- after I got cut off with Joe Orlando, it was the 2018 National in um, Cleveland. That was the first time I actually had a chance to see a PSA service rep face to face. And, you know, this was still three years later at that point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the reps was like, hey, how can I help you? And I was like, I'd really like to talk to somebody about the five, you know, at that point, it was like $10,000 worth of uh, fakes that were in my pocket, you know, and had somebody talk to me that basically he took the cards at that point in time and brought a letter back to me that was like, yeah, that was, those were definitely fake. You know, we're sorry about that, but you know, there's not a lot we can do when people are out there counterfeiting the product, which I, which I understand. But, you know, again, I just felt like it was handled very poorly from yeah. from the outset. Yeah. Their, their guarantee would not cover that because they are true. They were truly counterfeits, not something yep. where, you know, somebody trimmed up. a card, they trimmed a card, they sent it in, they, it got a grade right. and, you know, they, where it would kick in. But it's so this was a little bit different. Sure. Um, and, I, and I understand that. But communicate that with these people like I'm just literally left there hanging with, you know, I'm out five thousand dollars and, you know, just nobody. Gives hey, a thanks. Shit. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So Drew right. Drew brought up something. That, you know, back in the, you know, the 2015 era, you know, the the PSA was making change after change after change to the flip. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for those people that are new to the industry, the flip is what we call the little tag that's in the in the slab that gives you card information and, you know, serial number and all that kind of stuff. You know, but it seems like this guy Mayo was able to keep up with all of the changes and do it relatively quickly. Pass. Yeah, which brings up an interesting question that I have. Sure. And was he actually counterfeiting these, or was there somebody on the inside that every time a change was made would provide him with new blanks? And he was, and he was printing. I uh, I think that he was, or I, I don't think he was doing it. First of all, this guy was literally just a cash middleman that was he yeah. would sell it, then cut out his partner up the line with whatever percentage was agreed on. Um, this guy was definitely not actually manufacturing there, or not anywhere. He he was just a peddling guy, um, or well, if not him, whoever was doing these right. counterfeiting, like you know, did they were I, they truly counterfeiting or were they nah. given? I or, think they would probably yeah. do something where they would express a card, and as soon as there's a new flip, okay, cool, let's express a card. We'll have a copy of the new flip here in a couple of days. And the cases that they're getting were authentic PSA cases that were backdoored somewhere that they got manufactured. I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not. So they had authentic PSA cases. Well, they like had, I said, if they can, if they can backdoor the cases, they can backdoor the flips too. Yeah. Hunt that, and that's exactly my point. So, yeah, as soon as they had a new flip with a new security feature, they had the. Then they slapped the hologram on there. Yeah. Then they moved the hologram down over the red, and like they, they tried so many different things, but every time. And I, it was a story I was, it was, I was close to at that point. So I was following the crap out of that. Um, I know for sure there are major auction houses that sold in 2015 cards for $30,000 that were fake. I know yeah. for sure of a PSA 10 Ricky Henderson rookie that was sold from a major auction house that was dead ass fake because I tracked down the original owner who graded the card and still had it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So we get up to that point. You know, you've reached out to Joe Orlando. Joe blocked you. You talked to the PSA uh, rep in Cleveland in 2018. Mm -hmm. And at what point, uh, you know, obviously now we know with what broke yesterday, you know, we know the FBI has been involved in this for a while. The U.S. attorney's involved. Um, Strangely enough, it's actually not being run out of the art crimes uh, division, which is typically who handles the, the card related stuff uh, yeah, based out of right. Chicago. This one is actually being run out of uh, New York in a, in a completely different division. So it's a it kind of makes you wonder why. But I think I I think I may have an idea as to why now, but I'm not going to share that publicly because I don't want to sure. screw with anything. But <laughs> um, the so what what brought either you to the FBI at that point or brought the FBI to you. Um, So um, uh, my timeline, as far as involvement with any type of authorities with this goes like this. Um, Once I knew I was ripped off 
Um, I actually went to my first card show in Colorado ever and got in touch with a vintage guy. And I was like, Hey, you know, I got the Reggie Jackson back from Rick. And I was like, Hey, how's this look? He was like, the first thing the guy asked me was like, did you buy it from a guy named Mayo McNeil? Wow. <laughs> right. Right. So yep. like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I did. And he was like, okay, well, listen, I have a friend who knows this Denver police officer who's working on the case. So cool. I get the Denver police officer's number. I give him a call. He calls me back later. And when we start talking, um, his what he says to me is, John, I'd love to help you, but what happened to you happened in Aurora, which is a suburb of Denver. Yes, it didn't right. happen in Denver. So um, I can't help you. You would have to have somebody with the Aurora police call. And, you know, then we could work together or whatever. Um, I called the Aurora Police Department and I was told, sir, we have real crime. We don't have time to worry about baseball. Oh, Jesus so, Christ. So yeah. it sounds like it sounds like the Denver officer wanted to help. Yes. yes. Denver but officer because had of a jurisdiction, case. jurisdictional issues, he couldn't. Correct. Because my I made the purchase and my contact with Mayo at his trap house was in Aurora. Okay. So, and that's kind of when I realized that that was his trap house and not his regular place because he was being investigated in Denver for all this stuff, but, you know, obviously operating out of Aurora, yeah. which he may have realized that, hey, Aurora's got so much shit going on, they're not going to yep. investigate baseball right. cards. You know, if he heard the same thing I did, then why wouldn't it, you know? Yeah. Short after that, I was frustrated. I didn't know where to turn, but, you know, I kept hearing stories here and there of, oh my God, I just got ripped off by this guy. And at that point, I was pretty ferociously following every lead oh yeah you got ripped off tell me what you know what you knew and you know i had a little dossier going basically and um i ran into a guy on ebay who um they made a trade with him you know they contacted his ebay store and they're like hey i got this jordan yep. 10 i want to trade you for you know half your inventory and the guy's like Fuck, yeah let's go um and you know they make the deal find out it's fake and you know, so this guy I reach out to on eBay, I, I don't remember the seller's name or uh, handle, but he was like, listen, there's a case at the FBI, so I'm going to give you the number for somebody and reach out to them and tell them your story. So I called the guy and we talked for about two hours because yeah, I, I may have been interesting to that guy because it was a national case, but I was close enough that, you know, I went to his apartment. You know, yeah, I was right. inside of his dwelling, you know, you were, um, you were different because every, every, all the other ones were either probably done at shows or done through the mail. Well, um, well like myself, I, I mean, I was involved and I, we're, we're going to get to something that you had to do at the national too. I had to do the exact same thing. Um, mm -hmm. A couple, me and a couple of my friends, we've talked about it on this show before, both Scott, uh, since you've been on and before about how me and a couple of my friends had actually purchased some trim cards that were involved in these investigations. So I ended up having to do a lot of what you did as well. Okay. Yeah, but I wasn't on the ground floor. I wasn't in his apartment. I yeah. wasn't right there in the same town. That's why, you know, right. it blows my mind that so many people would, would be dismissing this as opposed to wanting to speak to you more. Oh, yeah. It, it, but And that was the only thing. And that was in 2016, I think, by the time I had talked to that FBI agent. And yeah. I did I did not hear a peep until the 2021 National when they came up to my booth, you know, and Mr. Scanlon have a few words for you. Mm -hmm. I go over to talk to them and, you know, we go over a few things and, you know, they asked a few questions. A few of them I remembered. A few of them I was real hazy on because, you know, it's been five, six years oh, at yeah. that point. Right. So um, then the last thing they asked of me was, hey, um, we're going to show you a few pictures. Do you think if you saw Mayo in a lineup, you'd be able to identify him? And I was like, yeah, pff, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, he was very distinguishable, you know, very yes. distinguishable features. And like, so they show me a lineup of six people and no question which one's mayo i tell them which one it is and i hear nothing about it again until last night when i see the news article that you know he's uh yeah now let me let me ask you this a man arrested yeah when they did the lot when they did the lineup did they show you six individual pictures or did they have it where it was like six pictures you know three on a top row three on a bottom row 
Nope. Um, it was actually done in a cell phone, so they handed yeah. me uh, a handheld device, and I swiped through six different mm-hmm. pictures. Okay, all right. That's what they did with me as well at 2021. <laughs> okay, because it, it, a lot of times when they, you know, when they do the blocks, the you know, three on top, three on the bottom. Yeah. It's always it, they always put the, you know, the guy who it actually is in the same spot. Yes. So yeah. it's all yeah. Um, it's usually it's usually top middle. And, uh, it's yeah. funny because it, the yeah. the one that I saw when I did the lineup, it was the very last person that I saw, and I mean, it was comically different the people that they showed. Like, <laughs> May- Mayo is a black man, and yeah. they showed me like an Indian woman, a uh, Hispanic male, like it nothing that resembled Mayo until like it was a picture of Mayo, and I was like, yeah, that's him. You know, so it it didn't even seem that hard, but yeah, it was a lineup. Yeah. um, (laughs) I mean, usually they try to get, you know, people that look, have have similar looks to them and stuff like that, just because the ID sticks a little bit better. No, Um, it it was the most random collection of people. And he (laughs) he was the only black guy that was in there. So. Interesting. Yeah, Yeah. I, yeah, couldn't believe it. So, all right. So you obviously you hadn't heard anything since the national. Then the article pops yesterday. Um, have you have you heard from any of the agents that you were working with or at all of the prosecutors since the article popped? Probably not. So I guess what nope. you know. What were your initial thoughts and feelings once uh, you know once you saw it? I saw this thing like 15 minutes before I was going to go to bed and I like my adrenaline shot, you know, like I I was happy, you know, I I actually am involved with card shows now because this happened because, you know, I wanted to create a real safe spot for the collectors out here and, you know, to really showcase people out here and, you know, to, to know that somebody who's been operating in our backyard for the better part of a decade doing this fraudulent crap is gone is amazing. Um, so I, I was shy. I had a shot of adrenaline. So I, I take it. You didn't get to sleep in the 15 minutes <laughs> before you, you went to bed. I, I did not. I was actually up for another couple hours because, you know, <laughs> I, he had article like, and I, it's funny enough because I didn't come across it on my Facebook or on my Denver card shows feed. Really? I came across I came across it on my local news station. You know, one of my <laughs> one of my buddies sent me a screenshot just of a picture that Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul are going to be in Denver for the next for the next few days promoting a tequila they have, right? Yep. Yeah. And, but he didn't send me a link. He just sent me a, a screenshot of it. So I was like, "Oh, cool. Let me go check out this article." So I look up the web uh the website and scroll down and sure enough, like the article right above the Brian Cranston thing where I stopped was a picture of a, a Jordan rookie. And I was like, what is that? 82 year old Aurora man arrested for $800,000 worth of fraud. And then, you know, I found it on ESPN and then, you know, I, I found it everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was up for a while just on the adrenaline from it for sure. So on a side note in relation to Cranston and Paul's tequila, <laughs> yeah. um, they were down in Austin doing a you know something similar and popped in uh to my buddy's concert uh that they oh, were playing cool. down in austin and they you know went up on stage and you know had tequila and i you know they had a great time with the audience and you nice. know we're meeting a lot of people stuff like that so if you do get a chance to get out and see them while they're doing the promotion they're from what i've heard they are like totally cool guys um awesome. yeah you know interacting with everybody so yeah go go track them down if you can if you can find them in denver right Cool. I'm going to definitely try. All right. So, uh, you know, so now all this has come to light. Mayo looks like he's finally, um, you know, where he belongs, getting into some trouble, getting into all this. But this is almost a decade later after Mm -hmm. all of this has been brought up that they'd known about him, that they and everything. And it's it really seems like, you know, after talking to you that if a lot of companies and people involved, not just the police, the FBI, but if, if PSA back in the day, if Joe Orlando, if people like that had actually come forward and actually tried to figure this stuff out and speak with people like you, this might've stopped a long time ago. 
because we are talking about a decade later. And now I'm sorry that eight hundred thousand dollars is bullshit. There's a lot <laughs> it's more. It's got to be more than that. that. And my my question is how many more how many more victims are out there that exactly. they don't know they don't even know about? Yep. Because, uh, because I'll tell yeah. you right now, John, you you said at the very beginning, 2015, just getting back into the card game when you were in it before, grading wasn't a thing. And Correct. so this man obviously saw you as a perfect mark to try this stuff out on because you yep. didn't know much about it, especially the grading aspect. And obviously they were good enough to get – uh, barcodes and stuff like that to match up. So when you scan it, it looks real. I mean, it, no red flags for someone like yourself going into it. So how many of those people all the way back from 2015 to even during the boom and even probably as close to a couple months ago still have those in their collection, don't pay attention to all this stuff and have no clue? I would be willing to bet that there's a small percentage, but it's an actual percentage number, a whole number, three, yeah. four, five percent of Jordans that are out there are fake. Um, it's I would bet my soul on that, because when I went to buy the card from him, um, you know, I did my work on the uh, serial number of the card that I bought. Right. But I did note that when I bought the Jordan from him, the card that I got from him was not the same card that he had listed on Craigslist. Like he had a different serial number. So like I had done my work on the serial number before I got there. Uh, but when I got there, I had to do it all again because it was but, but it's still chipped, but it's but still it all, checked out. But yeah. it all checked out. Yeah. And, and, he, and he even made a note that oh I've got a couple of those. You know, and the, what's crazy is at that point in time there was um I took a picture where he had when I bought the Reggie Jackson I took a picture where he had like five cards that were just jaw dropping. It was a, um, a Robin young PSA 10 rookie. Um, Jesus. yeah, it, there was a, um, a Dimitri young PSA 10, um, something. There was, a, a Nolan Ryan, 1971 tops black border PSA 10. Oh, like, those, see that, that right there yeah. would have been the red flag to me yeah. because those, the 71s do not 10. No. The you know anything with the black border, uh, or yeah. even any dark color border. You know the seventy fives were notorious for, the, for you know that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They do not gem. No. Um, yeah. You know the population count on those is so low that it it's. I, I would say there's more fit in that situation. There's more fake ones out there than real ones. Yeah. Right. Um, now my so my question is, you know the, with all this and we we know this is a popular thing. Is instead of counterfeits, like somebody would say, take a take a Jordan that came back. It's the real card, came back a seven. Press it, trim it, yeah, and then take the flip from a nine or a ten, and put that in the card. So that way, the card looks real. You you know, you mm -hmm. flip it over. It's got all the telltale signs. You put it under a loop. It, it's gonna, you know, it's going to be the real card. That that's um, what happened with the Reggie Jackson. The Reggie Jackson was a real, probably pressed and trimmed. Card yeah, that that aspect. sounded like a press and trim. Yeah, where the Jordan was a just complete fraudulent counterfeit. Which looks like in 2015, probably around when this stuff really began. This looks like they were trying out multiple things, seeing what would pass. Then, yes. then they were going for people like yourself. Obviously, also back then, Facebook groups weren't as big of a thing. All that stuff wasn't wasn't huge. So Craigslist was a place you went to look for cards quite a bit. Yeah. I bought a lot off of Craigslist before the social media group stuff started to come into play and Twitter you know, became a place to find stuff and Instagram, like Craigslist, I, I had bought in a ton. So oh, and that they, was they were definitely setting it. up a, a pretty big operation there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I'm interested to see and in how this progresses um, because there's, you know, they did mention there's an unindicted co-conspirator. Yes. They did. The article does reference company number one uh, where the guy had, uh, let me grab that. So, as part of the scheme, McNeil, together with others, obtained authentic company one tamper resistant cases and other uh, indices of authenticity, including company one logos, grading labels, and those. So, obviously, we don't know who the unindicted co conspirator is, and that's fine. The FBI will handle that. We, we do know that company one yeah. is 
PSA. PSA. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's one, you know, when that, you include a PSA flip uh, in the article, you, you kind of, uh, you kind of give that away. <laughs> well, but the, you know, but again, that's it's one of the things you know for for legal purposes. I think the way yes, you have to word yes. it in these cases is company one. Um, but yeah, we know that that we can say with one hundred percent certainty is PSA. Um, so I'm yeah, I'm curious to see how this all plays out. Um, and the nice thing about it being in court now is that we will get to. Yes. yes, and hopefully it takes Mayo. And, I mean, obviously it takes Mayo off off the board and hopefully closes up his trap house, which I'm absolutely using that to refer to anybody's uh, <laughs> bullshit in the card market from now on. Thank you for that, John. But uh, since it. they've shut down his good old, I mean, we talk about how everything wrong in this industry has got to do with drugs, so it might as well call uh, his little trap house. <laughs> trap house. Um, yeah. You know, but now that hopefully that you know this gets him off the board but he's not the guy doing all of this obviously um hopefully the unindicted co-conspirator two um shuts down hopefully this can shut down something that's been going on for close to a decade now um yeah. but I, I have my reservations. well usually usually when they mention unindicted co-conspirator that's usually something that they somebody that they know is caught up in it but is cooperating right. Yes. And that at that point, they have not filed charges against them, probably in exchange for their cooperation. Yeah. Um, which is why even if we even if we all knew who that was, we weren't going to be naming that person. No. You know, here anyway. Um, but if that person is talking and knows more, it is very possible that, you know, they're following things up the chain. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, to to get to the people that are higher than than mayo yeah absolutely. absolutely and and i mean there's definitely people higher than mayo that dude was just a face of what was happening yep yeah. and i i i have no doubt in my mind you know we'll go down conspiracy theory road for a minute i have no doubt if this is i mean i know of uh people that have been doing it out of some states here on the east coast so th this could be part of a massive national ring and mayo was that face of the the denver area you know what i mean or the the quote-unquote godfather of the denver area maybe he just ran the trap house who knows yeah and um, i mean he he may have just been you know the the gm of all of it the district manager you know with his dude yeah. in nashville and his dude in florida and his dude in cali you know yeah. who knows but that that dude was definitely not working alone like that he wasn't the one doing it but he yeah. was definitely the part of something bigger so yeah well buy, hopefully buy hopefully, from a trusted source exactly <laughs> and hopefully the um that something bigger or somebody bigger will uh you know will get taken down soon and the industry will be a safer place for it for sure I, yeah. well i tell you what the industry without mayo is a safer place today than it was yesterday so well, that, I hope we can really keep that momentum rolling. That's a good thing to know. And that's a good thing for everybody in the hobby to know. And I greatly appreciate you sharing, you know, these details of the story because we get so many, so many different articles from so many different sources, basically stating the exact same thing. It's nice to speak to somebody that, you know, has had these experiences and, you know, yeah. dealt with all this. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to share my story and, you know, anything I can do to help protect anybody in this community, I'm, I'm all in. Well, I definitely know that. And I and on that note, I did want to bring up, uh, as you said, um, you know, that that experience led you to kind of what you do now. And yep. uh, before I let you go today, I do want to uh, talk a little bit. Obviously, you guys are one of our sponsors. Thank you guys so much for that, by the way. Uh -huh. But um, you do run Denver card shows, and yes. you just had your uh, just had your last show, which I talked to a couple people that were there. Told me it was a tremendous success. I'd like to hear what uh, a few minutes at least, or a minute or so, and what you thought about the last show, and then uh, tell everybody a little bit about the Denver card show. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, out in Denver and Colorado, it's a great place to come visit. Great place for a card show. And we've got a great community of guys out here with tremendous inventory, knowledge, and everything. So um, they really do deserve to be showcased. And, you know, if you haven't been out here, let's go check it out. But um, the last show is tremendous. Um, awesome. I've kept hearing through the end of last year, the hobby's dead, the hobby's dead, the hobby's dying. And um, if that's the case, man, 
I, I'd hate to see what it's like when it's alive because <laughs> our show was in February of 2023 was the best show that we've ever put on. Um, we've done more regionally aimed shows before that were not as well attended as this was. Um, now I've, I've had a few life changes, so I I'm pouring everything I have now into Denver card shows into making this, you know, the, the success that it should be. But we took the step that we really showed a lot of people who came in from uh, all different parts of the country that this is a show that should be attended. This is a show that has a lot to offer everyone. Nice. And, then, and that's good to hear. I think I think the only people that are really saying the hobby is dead are the you know the the flippers that got into it at the height of it yeah. you know a couple of years ago and now everything you know everything from them from their perspective fell off. Sure. Well, it, which if you're, which even if around. you are, if you're looking at it now, hey guys, I I, I hate to tell you guys this because I know you love making all your negative social media posts and all those cute little memes that get you views all day long. Prices are going up on a lot of stuff not not one or two things not just the vintage market not just the modern market not just yeah. basketball but overall in general so yeah relax guys <laughs> absolutely yeah i think it's funny the guys that got in at the peak when they're all big mad about this right now because every one of us at the peak was looking around going this ain't right yeah. <laughs> this ain't yeah. how it is. What yeah. what happens to the dip? You know, where where's the dip? Like yeah. where's the off, where's the I, dip? I look at it from a you know from a market standpoint, you know, the same way you know stock market gets ridiculously high and you expect a correction. Right. right? And right. The, like I was sitting there saying for months, corrections coming. There's gonna mm -hmm. be a correction, there's gonna be a correction, and hey, it finally happened. It took right. longer than I expected. Yeah, right, but right. we saw and the, the, and the peak was higher than we thought it would get. Yes. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah. no, ab absolutely. Uh, but yeah, one thing's for sure: the dip did come back. Uh, <laughs> and anyone that didn't do what I always say, you got to adapt in this hobby. And so, if you didn't adapt, then I, I understand why you're a bitter person right now. But that's your own exactly. Fault. But uh, yep. but uh, before I let you go, John, um, why don't you tell everybody if they are in uh, the Denver surrounding area, I will say the Collecticon we did in Denver was one of my favorites. Uh, the passionate, the, the collectors that you were talking about, it is insane. The dealers, the collectors, everyone from around that area. Uh, Denver was one of the bigger and more fun shows that we had from the entire tour last year. I'm looking forward to going back there this year. Um, but tell everybody uh, how they can find you and uh, when the next show is. Awesome. We've got um, two big shows coming. We've got one at the end of April that's our more regular localized show. Um, mm -hmm. But we've got that built up to about 200 tables that we're expecting at the end of that month. And then our more regional show where we're trying to get a big draw is going to be at the end of June, the 23rd through the 25th. You can find all this information on my website at denvercardshows.com. And that is also my handle on all social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all of it. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for coming on the show, man, and uh, talking about this uh, wild story that looks like after, um, let's see, almost a decade of you trying to get this man, uh, get the spotlight shined on him and get him off of the hobby and out of the hobby, it looks like might have finally succeeded. So uh, thanks for coming on, man, and thanks for sharing your story. Let's go, guys. Thank you all very much for everything. Drew, I love your work. Keep it up, man. Thanks, brother. Scott. Nice meeting you. Good meeting you too, my friend. And once again, I'd like to thank John Scanlon, the owner of Denver Card Shows and the first known victim of this absolutely ridiculous scam for coming on the show. And uh, Scott, dude, that, that, that was an awesome interview. That was fun. I I, I did have fun with that one. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a rough topic where you can yes. you know, to say, hey, I had fun with that. Right. But uh, look, John, I love John great guy i love what he's doing with the hobby i love the reasoning behind why he's doing these things exactly with the hobby. i feel horrible that this happened to him yeah and yes him and everyone else absolutely hate what's going on yeah but but you're right he is absolutely i mean he is a fun guy to to have on mm -hmm. um i just wish that it was a you know We'd be saying that when it was a different topic. Yeah, a more positive uh, yeah. issue instead of a bunch of people getting scammed. Exactly. Um, like, I would love to see us have him on when 
Denver card shows, you know, hits like the thousand table mark. Right. And, you know, right. you know, he's talking about, you know, the expansion and the growth and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And it's like, all right, cool. That uh, that that would be awesome. Let's have fun. And I hope um, to have that here in the, in the future. <laughs> I, I hope so, too. Uh, Den- look, Denver's a great market. Uh, oh, yeah. There's a they're very underserved. Yeah. And I think part of the reason that he's doing so well out there with the shows is because they have been historically underserved. Yeah, not and not just Denver, that entire area of not even just Colorado, but that area around it, states around it. They they don't have much. Yeah. You know, if you're not in a large city or on the East Coast or West Coast, you're kind of up the creek. Yeah. You know, or yeah. or you're in Texas. You know, Houston and Dallas have some really good shows yeah. down there. But other than that, I mean, you're kind of up the creek. So it's about time somebody grabbed the bull by the horns and did something about it. I, I just, you know, I just wish that he didn't decide to do something about it because of what happened. Exactly. It didn't need to be a couple thousand dollars lost in a scam. Right. When you get back into the hobby for, for this to want to take place, you know, exactly. And this is a, this is a story that we're going to follow. You know, as I, as I mentioned during the interview, the really cool thing about this is now everything is playing out is going to play out in court. Right. And we are going to see court filings. We're, uh, you know, going to see, I don't know if we're going to, I don't know if there's gonna be reporters in the courtrooms, you know, during no, all, all this I, stuff. But I, I, look, maybe maybe Sports Collectors Daily will send somebody to the to the courtroom. Shoot, I'm gonna contact Rich to see if he wants me to. <laughs> it's, well, I mean, look, if you want to go up to New York, that is that is. I mean, not really, but it's, yeah, I will. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's one of the things we'll be we will be able to follow. But I'm very curious as to where this is gonna head. I am curious to see who unindicted co-conspirator is yeah and i I, i'm really curious to see how many more people like we've got unindicted conspiracy number one i i'm curious to see where this leads up the food chain as we mentioned in the interview mayo i firmly believe was kind of the west coast denver office quote unquote if you will you know runner of the denver trap house he was he wasn't working he wasn't. Thank you, John. By the way, for giving us a new. Uh, <laughs> I'm still. You know, I was laughing about that. Then I'm still laughing about that now. I know. Um, but I think this, McNeil was just that guy in that area. In no way, shape, or form do I think he was the mastermind behind all of this. And so I, I'm going to be very interested to see where all of this goes. Yeah, no, I am. I am too. And you know, I've always referred to my my office in my basement as as the bunker. Because it looks like, you know, with the, the shelving behind me and yes. you know, I guess if you've seen it on the live broadcast that we've done, you know, it kind of looks like I'm in one of those like bomb shelters, you know, right. um, I'm not calling it the bunker anymore. I'm, you know, I, I kind of want to start calling it the trap house, um, <laughs> but my but my business is legit. So exactly. I'm not entirely sure if I can if I can really get away with that. But yeah, um, yeah, we are we are totally using that. No. Yes. Thank you, John. <laughs> yeah. Um, in fact, you know what? The convention centers now where the, you know, Rosemont Convention Center, where the Nationals is going to be this year. We are now calling that the Rosemont Trap House. 100%. Yeah. Megan Brogy will thank us later. <laughs> 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 I love Megan. She's going to laugh at that. Yes, when she no, that, Megan's so. the best. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, we're going to be following this. We are going to update you when things happen on it. If we know any other victims that are out there. Hell, if you were a victim, reach out. I mean, hell, let us know, but reach out to John. Yeah. Um, you know, he gave all so you know his information on how to find him. Uh, you know, right before he he left, and reach out to him because he has the contacts with the FBI, and uh, you know he knows who to get in contact with. You know, add definitely add your name to the to the list. I'm sure it's going to grow. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you have any questions, any thoughts, and uh, especially with your old school cards, if you feel uh, you're those old school flips, do the thumbnail trick, uh, do anything you can to your slabs, check them out if you haven't known. Um, but definitely if something has happened or you feel that you were a victim in this, reach out to John, like he said, over at Denver card shows or us, we can get you in contact with him as well. I've also spoken with the FBI about this, as I mentioned in the interview as well, reach us out. I can get you the information on who you need to contact and all that stuff as well as now that this is finally, like you said, in court, now that yeah. people are finally it looks like they're coming after some people. This is the time we need people to speak up. Don't don't keep this hidden. It's not something to be ashamed of that you got taken or anything. I know a lot of people 
from running uh, the scammers page when I did on Facebook for like eight years. A lot of people felt, you know, ashamed or like that they were stupid for falling for it. Don't feel that way. Like it happens. But, you know, come forward because the only way we can get this stuff to stop is to trace these provenances, figure out yep. where the stuff came from and find the people involved. Exactly. Yeah. And on that note, Drew, it was a great show this week. It was. I thought it was a wonderful show. One other topic that I did want to cover before we end for the week. What's that? Tops. Are you listening, Tops? <laughs> I know where this is. Tops. All right. Oh. I want you to write this down, get a pen and paper. Tops, this is for you. What the hell are the hidden gems? <laughs> Enough enough of the secrecy already. Please. Don't make me bring out the car battery and the jumper cables <laughs> and strap somebody to a chair to get the information out of you. Yes. Just freaking tell us. Yes, just please. I mean, I... I I, I, I've done as much as I can. I know the even sports card investors are starting to ask. They can't figure it out as well. Jeff Wilson was uh, looking all over our post that we did. Uh, I, we were able to find one card that could possibly be something that I doubt it is, but it'd be, I've tried to speak to all my contacts there. The people that I know that work there, they don't even know what that they're, they're supposed to be looking for. So that kind of surprised me as well when I showed them this card. They're like, I don't know what that is, and I don't know if that's a hidden gem. And so, I, guys, tell us something. Are we peeling stuff? Is it in the box? Is it in the packs? Is it a different card? Anything. Just just tell us. Ooh, I had an idea. What's that? Black light. Oh. Hidden ink. Yes. That, that, that actually lines up with... You it you just can't see it. Yeah. Ooh. Ah, I got a black light that I use for when I assess cards. Here we go. Yeah, when you when you assess cards, we'll put that in air quotes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's when you it's when you put on the uh, the trippy music in the background and you know, <laughs> pull the window shades down and yeah, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Trap so out. I just thought about that black light. Um, I like that. Maybe that's maybe that is it. But the fact tops that we're still having to do this is driving me nuts. Car battery and jumper cables tops. <laughs> there you go. Straight from Scott's mouth. Give me you the heard information. It. <laughs> yes. Give it. Give us something. Give us anything. Yeah. Anything on that would be nice. And on that note. Yes. Drew yeah, would yeah. love to thank our awesome sponsors. Absolutely, Scott. We could not do the show without you guys. Of course, John from Different Car Shows. But in addition, Card Ladder, Show Your Slabs, Slab Strong, Bandy Slabs, Treasure Hunter Sports Cards, and of course, iHeart Media and Wax Pack. Guys, a new episode of Letter Rip will also be out this week if you missed last week's. Holy cow! Did we hit a monster? Definitely check that out on uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can also find the clips and everything on all of our socials. Of course, Hobby Hotline every single Saturday. Definitely make sure to check that out. I'll actually be on tomorrow's episode, so make sure to come hang out, tune in. But uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with another awesome show. And until then, you guys know the deal. Keep ripping those packs, pulling those hits. We'll talk to you then. Peace!